Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module I want to show you how to save a baseline. So first of all, I'm just going to create a couple of tasks. Task A, Task B, Task C and Task D. Task D. And then I'm just going to give these one, two, three, one durations. In fact, I'll insert a title for this insert task, call it project A and then they can all be indented under that so that's my little project indent that so that the whole project is three days now if I link these, which I will do because they're all highlighted and I'll just double click on here to put the task names on the Gantt chart part of the screen so you can see them so that's the project now a couple of resources, so I'll just go to the resource sheet and we'll have Bob and Bill. They can both be on £10 an hour, £15 overtime. Highlight those two, drag them down, so it's the same. Everything else is okay. I just need to allocate these people to tasks. Go to resource, assign resources, click on the task you want them on. So they can both do that one, and then I'll have just Bob on that one, and Bill on that one, and then on this one they can both do that one. Now I want to show the critical path, so let's go to Gantt chart format, tick that. Everything's critical because there's no slack between the tasks. You create another task, task E, that won't be critical. Of course, it'll start today and it'll show in blue. That's how that works. And now I'm just going to delete that one. Now, so I've got the resources allocated. I've got my task list. Everything's looking good. I like it. Oh, everything's displaying. So now I'm ready to save a baseline. To save a baseline, you go to the projects tab. And then in the middle there, you've got set baseline. Set baseline. And then you come up with this box. And in there, you've got 11 baselines. The first one isn't numbered. But there are 10 numbered ones and then the first one, which I'm going to click on now. And then that will save what I've done here as the line in the sand, if you like, the baseline for this project. Now, you only really should save a baseline when you've got everything tagged and bagged and you're ready to go. If I click OK with that. Now, any changes I make to this plan will be uh, recorded against that baseline. So you then can run reports uh, showing the baseline against actuals so for example what I should now do is start updating this project now this is the entry table if I go to the view tab and tables this is the entry the default table if you like what you should be using now is the tracking table and the tracking Gantt which is down this left hand side so I'm just going to go into that this um, tracking Gantt so the difference is you've got the percentage complete and you've got a charcoal coloured baseline marker showing you that. Now, and if I change the table to the tracking table, you get a few things in there as well that you can add or remove. So you've got the percentage complete, actual durations and things like that. So actual start, actual finish and actual duration. If, if um, I just move that actual duration there now what I want is the baseline start so I'm just going to right click insert a column I want baseline start baseline finish so I know when it was planned to start and finish and baseline duration those three columns I always add myself but that's just my personal preference so I know when this was due to start now if I highlight these three actually I should move these the other way um, move them one at a time after that so they've got actual finish and then actual duration just sorting this out however you want it to be right so that's the planned start date and planned finish date and the baseline duration if you like now the way it works is you basically can use any of these fields and it will affect the other fields. Now what I don't recommend is 
just going down this percentage complete option always and that is what you've got on the task tab percentage complete you have got a an option there mark on track or go in there and update tasks um, there's no point coming into this box if you've got this tracking table on because you can get this information from here so cancel that for a minute what I tend to do is say this say this was due to start on Wednesday the 1st but I say well it was didn't start then it started on the 8th so immediately that's going to knock everything off the Gantt chart baseline you can see the movement there and it's due to be one day what I normally say is rather than doing 100% if I put that was two days when I do that it fills in the actual finish date for me and it goes to 100% now you've got remaining duration there look so if that wasn't 100% say it was two days done and you still reckon you've got one day left you can go like that and it'll knock it back down to 67% and then if you put that to three days it completes that but obviously that is now a lot bigger than it initially was planned now that was me changing the start date and just doing the duration if I just go into this one don't bother with the start date let's assume it did start on the Thursday the second if I just put two days there immediately fills all that in and does the hundred percent complete and likewise you've got the option of actually physically typing hundred percent in there but I don't think that's good practice because you then not actually put in what the actual duration was highly unlikely a planned task is going to be exactly how you planned it normally when you do a plan as soon as you go live everything goes off straight away and you have to adjust your plan so this is the way i would recommend that you do it you just use the actual duration so let's say this was this was planned um let's go for four days on this one and let's say there's two days remaining so you can see that it's showing you there how that works so this is the baseline the first baseline that we saved now I haven't done this but if you want to you can go back into baselines and select another baseline you might want to select a baseline every two three months through a project because it is it is recording time phased work costs man man effort man hour effort and things like that it's it's recording quite a lot of information that you can measure if your initial plan is totally off spec you might want to reset the whole thing but I wouldn't just overwrite that as a matter of course unless you'd saved it too early because it's it's, it's, a, it's a line in the sand where you can look back over at the end of the project and review and say well that was way off the second baseline was more accurate we'll use that as our forward plan for the next project and so on and so on so you've got 11 of these all together um, and then you've got um, this option interim dates which just saves the date not the costs or time phase work just the start and finish date this is a bit of a legacy from older versions so you can use these so these are custom start and finish fields that you'll be filling in so if you've used the custom start and finish fields this will overwrite that so you've got to be careful there because you've got 11 baselines now it's, it's fairly safe for you to just use these and saves more information so I'll just cancel that so hopefully that was a very useful video for you quick how to save a baseline in Microsoft project so thank you for your time I'll see you in the next one